I rise to speak about the racial divisions that continue to be perpetuated by the Liberal Labor Uni Party and their toxic native title system. One Nation's candidate for the Queensland seat of Capel, James Ashby, is doing a wonderful job holding the Miles Labor government accountable for its failure to meet $30 million worth of commitments, commitments to Great Keppel Island. Further, James Ashby deserves the credit for exposing the latest, latest native titles claim on the weekend on this island. This claim, if successful, would mean 84 per cent of Great Keppel Island would be excluded from non-Indigenous Australians. One of the jewels of central Queensland and an Australian tourism icon could effectively be closed off for all time from the Australian people, from local businesses and from international visitors. This isn't the first time an Indigenous group has tried to close off Great Keppel Island from the rest of us using a divisive native title claim. In 2021, the Federal Court denied a native title claim over the Great Keppel Island leases held by Tower Holdings due to pre-existing infrastructure of commercial value. One Nation calls on this latest claim to be thrown out too and for the Miles Labor government to honour its $30 million promise to clean up and restore Great Keppel Island. Yet we must go much further than that. We're calling for a comprehensive review of the entire native title system and a sunset clause on native title claims because it's getting out of hand and it's excluded, excluding from many, any consultation on these processes the most important stakeholders of all, the Australian people. More than 50 per cent of Australia is now under native title claim, yet fewer than 3 per cent of Australians have had any say in it. The rest of us are excluded from the process. While state governments, councils and the federal court get a say, they almost never represent community views because they don't ask us for our views. We're not asked because they don't want to hear our views. This is what happened in the lead up to the voice referendum. There was a lot of consultation costing a lot of taxpayer money, but only with Indigenous groups. There was none for the rest of us, rest of Australia. It's one of the main reasons it was such a spectacular $450 million failure, a flop. Consultation was undertaken in an echo chamber where dissent was absent. Dissent was chastised. Dissent was suppressed. Native title claims are resolved in this sort of bubble as well, a bubble from which most Australians are always excluded, <laughs> deliberately. Even those people specifically intended to benefit from native title are excluded from those benefits. I often visit remote communities in Cape York and the Northern Territory, and the number one complaint from Aboriginal Australians right across Cape York and, and the sites I visited, the communities I've visited in the Northern Territory, is their inability of Aboriginals to get land title, while unaccountable land councils act as robber barons building fiefdoms. This was expressed to me again by Aboriginal elders who heard I was visiting Maribyr and Gympie last week and came to see me and att attended a forum I hosted. There's another agenda going on in the background. The Native Title Act's preamble is littered with references to the United Nations policy and declarations. Why was this so? This fits in the UN agenda of attacking private land ownership and locking the land away from use. Unfortunately for local Aboriginals, they're denied the opportunity of actually owning their piece of Australia by buying it to live on or invest or build or develop it, farm it or use it as collateral for a business loan to set up a business. Native title holds Aboriginals back from doing what all other Australians can do with land. It works to maintain the gap, not close it. When British colonists arrived, there was no form of land ownership on the mainland. There was no recognition of individual land ownership, security or passing the land onto heirs. Land title only existed in limited form in some Torres Strait Islands. The Mabo decision was based on this distinction. It was the native title, it was the Labor native title legislation that extended this to the mainland of Australia, incorrectly. Native title perpetuates racial discrimination in Australia by creating rights based on race. This is wrong and must be reversed. The whole concept is consistent with Labor's policy of waste and arrogance and disdain for Aboriginals and all Australians as part of a global agenda. Labor is one part of the Uni Party. The Liberal Nationals have done nothing, nothing to review this act to fix things for all Australians. Democratic government is supposed to work for the people and serve the people. Instead, in recent decades, the uni party governance works to control the people. They push a global agenda to control people and steal property and transfer wealth to the party's corporate globalist masters. We need a comprehensive review of native title urgently so that we can get back to helping Aboriginals 
get some land.